Welcome to this cold morning in summary up to Gunawara Vineyard. My name's Tony Johnson, uh, Director of Villawood Properties. Um, I have a co-director, Rory Costello, who can't be to here today, but he'll be on video at some stage during our presentation. What many of you may or may not know um, is that I was a resident of Sunbury for 30 years. Um, so I brought my family up here and have a very strong passion for Sunbury. I consider that I know Sunbury very, very well as well after spending 30 years up here. So I am one of you and I'm a passionate, uh, if anyone follows Rupo Footy Club, a uh, very passionate supporter of local football as well. What today's about is introducing you a little bit to Villawood Properties, uh, what we're about, and more importantly, a little bit of history on why we're here today, specifically in what is the new growth area of Melbourne. I wanted to sort of illustrate to you that history for a number of reasons, because it's had a, a very much a delaying effect on what we've been doing over the last four or five years. In the year 2012, um, a planning minister, my name Justin Madden, and I think you all know as a famous footballer, did a review of Melbourne's growth areas. And basically at that stage, Sunbury was not destined for future growth. So at that stage, the government designated that Sunbury would grow, and most probably from a base of about 30,000 people up to about 100,000 people over the next 20 years. So um, really much a milestone in what, um, of what we call a growth of Sunbury. If you see that dark area on the map, that's the existing or was the existing growth boundaries of Sunbury. So basically, the growth boundaries of, of Sunbury have been extended out up along the Lansfield Road, out along the um, Riddle Road, Sunbury Riddle Road, and to a lesser extent out along Vineyard Road, and to a very small extent along Wilson's Lane. So what we're gonna see over the next 20 years is primary growth in those areas, which will accommodate the future growth of Sunbury. The, over the last nine years, once it was designated for growth, very simply put, what happened is uh, we worked with the government to get this growth going. It's been a quite a, a long and arduous journey. Um, I'll just quickly explain why it's been so long and arduous. There's been a number of issues. They were primarily the infrastructure to be provided for the area was, is at a high cost. This, the upgrade of the Sunbury Buller Road and the Buller Road, uh, the, sort of generally the Buller Bypass, that's been a, a very, very big issue. And we also lost about two years of planning time as a consequence of the then drive for Sunbury to get out of Hume. Um, about three years ago, four years ago, there was a strong drive to take Sunbury out of the city of Hume. It was strongly fought back and effectively we are and will at this stage remain under this government within the city of Hume. So there's been some big issues that have sort of, um, if you like, delayed our progress. But um, as of December uh, last year, Minister Wynne um, then went and issued to us what's called a precinct structure plan. So that enables us generally to go and subdivide land. What a precinct structure plan actually does, it sets up the bones of the development, the schools, the infrastructure, the bridges, the, the parks. So that was actually issued to this whole precinct, which I'm talking about, which is this precinct here and here uh, in December last year. Normally, under normal circumstances, that is the key for us to commence development. There has been another compounding issue and the state government has got re-involved and really the compounding issue is the amount of which we will pay in the way of developer contributions to fund the infrastructure for this area. Now, it may sound a little bit complicated, but that's what has been delaying us. I think as a company, everyone's seen those signs on the road for some time as a, a slight credibility issue. So that's why I wanted you to take you through that journey we've been on. Right now, the state government has promised us that that infrastructure amount will be sanctioned by November. And we are very, very much hoping that by early next year, we'll be in a position to move forward with pre-selling and development. That is still in the hands of our wonderful state government. However, we are very, very, very close, we feel. So it's been a, a frustrating journey. The major bits of infrastructure, by the way, which are gonna really affect somebody moving forward, if you didn't know, is a desire to have effectively a ring road around Sunbury. So ultimately, if you go down Racecourse Road, ultimately the government want a bridge across here, right across the Jackson Valley, 
which will come down Lansfield Road. Also, there is to be a major loop road, which effectively comes down to the south of Sunbury, which affects um, very much so traffic moving through the, ma the, major, the major arteries of Sunbury. So ultimately, and in the first instance, this southern loop road, which will effectively take us from Redstone right out to Vineyard Road, will be a major piece of infrastructure which the government will be constructing um, over the next five year journey. So, very big deal, and as you all know, if I had to say there's two issues with living in Sunbury, um, it's certainly traffic and shopping. <laughs> um, so, there is, um, Sunbury will change dramatically in the next 10, 5, 10, 15 year period, and some of these pieces of infrastructure will um, really give us a boost moving forward. A little bit about Villawood, you're going to learn a little bit about Villawood today. I'm not going to talk too much about ourselves. We're there to be seen for what we do. Um, we're a developer who actually delivers what we promise. And how I say to prove that is I'd love to you, if any of you people are going to live on our development, to go and see some of the existing developments. That's the best way I can talk to what we do. I can sit up here all day and say how good we are, but please take the time to go and visit some of our developments, some of the communities we create. The exciting thing about this project is it's at least 2,000 lots. That gives us the opportunity for the first time ever in Sunbury to create what we call a master plan community based around a set of sporting, educational, and more importantly, a brand new town centre for um, the area of Sunbury, which is, I think, dramatically needed. So look, I'm not gonna bore you too much. Um, again, I just want to say, uh, I am very personally passionate about Sunbury. You're gonna get a first-rate development in this particular area. And uh, it's something I've been quietly working to for 15 years, so I have invested a lot of my time and effort into that. I'm going to hand you over to Andrew Duggan, who's the Senior Development Manager, to, to walk you through the development a bit and advise what we've got going on. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Very quickly, some of the key topics we're going to cover today, um, pretty straightforward, but it's obviously to set up a bit of a framework for you guys to understand a little bit more about the project, obviously about who we are. We've got a series of videos today as well, so just to keep it a bit of light, entertainment, tell you who we are and, and certainly what we are doing. We started off very humble beginnings. I was brought up as a country lad, so we were, always were a caring, um, community-minded organisation. A developer must be passionate about what he does. The reason that perhaps Rory and myself are still in this business is that we are passionate about what we do. I think it's important for our brand to be regarded as a developer with a difference. We just love to be innovative, we love to be seen to be first. Villawood and Rory and myself obviously feel very strongly about our social responsibility, more in relation to providing a quality environment for people to live and an affordable product. The proliferation of, uh, of spectators in the market, what it's doing is really driving our prices. There's lots of um, people in the market who are just buying land because they're seeing prices go up so rapidly. They're buying land, putting back in the market straight away just to make a profit. So we've actually changed the nomination clauses so nobody can do that anymore. That's really cut out speculation in Villawood projects. The ones that I'm, we are concerned about is the care workers. The people actually care for our community, whether the police, teachers, fireys, lots of other community workers. If they can't live where they need to be looking after the community, if they can't afford to live in those areas, it, it's no good for anybody. The reaction we've had since we've had this offering to our care workers has been wonderful. People have really embraced it. A developer of a difference is, is many things, but to me it's about our philanthropic uh, values. Um, and some of the very, very good causes we give to. They are really important to us and to the communities we are dealing with. Last year, I think our total um, philanthropic spend was about $1.7 million, which we're obviously very proud of. Our headline support is a Royal Children's Hospital Good Friday appeal. But on top of that, we like to go to every one of our communities and support multiple smaller community groups, particularly those who can't perhaps attract normal funding. And people just really enjoy the fact that we um, really get into our local community and, and in return, they, um, they give us a lot of support. Staying ahead of the game for Villawood is one of our prime objectives. We always try to do things a little bit differently with a bit of a twist. Uh, we try to do things in an innovative way using technology and using, I think, things untried and untested. It's really culminated with the collaboration with South East Water at our Aquarivo project. It's a wonderful project. We think it will be the most sustainable community in urban Australia when it's finished. Changing the uh, thoughts of communities and acceptance of all these sustainable initiatives, it all takes time. It's all a matter of education. I think that's why Aquarivo is so important because people can come and touch and feel it, see it, see that it works. We just need that training ground to make sure people have the right focus for the future. We always say we create the best communities and we believe we do, but 
we actually do care about them. We care about the people in them and we care about their future. So I think that's our big differentiation. So that just gives you um, a little bit of context on obviously Villawood, the developer with a difference. Just to reflect on that, we obviously have projects in Melbourne and Geelong that are currently selling and also being developed at the moment. So as Tony rightly said, welcome you to go and have a look at any of those. And there is also an Eastern seaboard presence with Sydney and uh, South East Queensland as well. So in terms of the, the town planning context, Tony did capture on this a little bit, but at the same token, we're very, very focused on where we're at and getting to that starting line. But that being said, there is obviously a number of delays that have occurred. Um, and, and certainly for us, as a, as a business, we take pride in delivering on time and certainly with what we say being our promise as well. The nature of that that's really important and it's really important for you guys is that when you buy, we want to deliver certainty as to when you're going to deliver your title and when you're going to be able to actually start commencing to build your home. Um, and that's ultimately the focus. Um, so you will see other developers out there selling at the moment without planning approval, without permits in place, with no clarity, so to speak, as to when construction will be able to start. But knowing we can get to the starting line and start construction simultaneously is extremely important. That being said, um, we'll be able to deliver at, at the same time, if not before everyone else uh, as well. So this video will just give you a little bit of context as to what has happened and, and certainly why over that last 10 years journey as well. The interesting thing about the planning approvals is that since 2008 we've gone from a situation of Sunbury having no growth area status to now it's been accepted at state level that Sunbury is a designated growth area again and that was a very, very significant part in the evolution of the potential of Sunbury. And we're now at a point where what's called precinct structure plans have been approved for Sunbury. They are the next level of detailed planning that sets out where the parks are going to be located, where the town centres are going to be located, where the roads and other transport networks will be located to service the future community. And that really is the point that all of this visioning that's been going on over the last 10 years starts to come to reality. The machines will be out there on site, the community can start to understand that construction is underway, and it really will be the signal that the new uh, part of Sunbury is about to be unfolded. So it'll be something like a thousand hectares of public parkland that'll be delivered as a consequence of the, the development being delivered. You don't see those opportunities happening in most other growth areas where you've got the opportunity to deliver something that's meaningful for the future community. And I really believe that the properties have got the potential to deliver upon those commitments to the benefit of the entire community. Okay, so we know, obviously, most people will know where the site is, but just context-wise, Sunbury Road, um, obviously the Redstone Project sits on the southwestern side of Sunbury Road as you come in. This is our overarching master plan. So you will be getting familiar with this over, I guess, the coming months and certainly seeing more of this. As we did mention, we've got approximately 2,000 lots. We've got a display village, major town centre, which we'll capture today. Residence club, which is part of our signature model in terms of a master plan community, as well as a huge amount of open space um, on top of Redstone Hill itself, and then also back down into the creek and the environs around the creek. Okay, so the unique selling propositions and, and certainly elements of the project, I won't read all of these out. The residence club side of things for us is extremely important. It's about bringing the community together. It's about delivering a community entertainment spot, recreation, fun, parents lounge, and certainly a diverse um, mix of people can come together and, and build relationships, strengthen those relationships through new community and certainly your neighbours as well. And this will give you a little bit of context on certainly what the, a residence club is, what our residence club will be, as well as some imagery um, as well. 
Redstone and Club Redstone will be, I think, our seventh community building we will have built. And every time we do it, we just do it bigger and better and better. Essentially, our vision for Club Redstone was looking at a gateway building into the new community. We've taken inspiration from two key elements within the surrounding area, one being the natural forms, which are really significant in the area, and the other is the existing homesteads that are quite historic and significant in the region as well. So we've used that as an architectural inspiration within our built form. Essentially, you walk into the building, you're greeted big open, friendly reception point. You see directly through to the lap pool, all of the amenities internally, children's splash pool, recreation space, barbecue area, all of this activity happening internally. That's really at the heart and what's celebrated within our architecture and our planning of the building. We've got some really great elements internally, large gym area that looks out over the lap pool and the recreation space, childcare centre on first floor. We've got a, a function space with two balcony areas. Really at the heart of the planning of the building is this parents room. So it gets a good vista to all of the uses internally within the building and everything externally as well. So essentially the building has all of the key elements of a, a new community space, bringing lots of different types of people together. And I think. All the learnings we've done from the last 10, 15 years of building these clubs will all come together to build the most amazing place and the community will be just so surprised, so happy and um, I think we'll just generate a really happy community. So that just gives you um, a bit of context from the architectural design and, and certainly where the club's going to be in Redstone. In this second video, We'll give you context as to the community that we are creating. So the people that are enjoying these spaces, particularly largely out of the, the Armstrong project down at Mount Uneed in Geelong. It's a matter of recognising what there is in the environment around you and actually drawing the best things in to make new and exciting things. It really becomes that melting pot where people can come along, meet new people and they have a great time. It's great to see so many people out about walking and making use of the great space that we've got here. My favourite's probably the pool. There's two pools, so I get to choose which one I want to swim in. Get a bit of a buzz out of that small community vibe. Everyone's really friendly and always says hi. We love it up here. It gives us an opportunity to meet people. It's certainly the central hub to the community. great to get to know other new mums, catch up and really have a sense of support as well as the fun. It just had this amazing community vibe. As soon as we came here we knew that this was the place that we wanted to build our forever home. Okay, and then we move forward into, um, there's a series of renders here that have been prepared by Clark Hobbins Clark, who is the architect, and you would have seen Jordan on the screen there, but uh, this will give you a little bit of context and as to what the building's going to look like. This is taken from the entrance, um, obviously looking through the cafe. At first floor level, you can see obviously a deck space, but also a function space, as well as secondary access for, for upstairs for the childcare centre as well. Uh, lap pool, 25 metre lap pool, there's a splash deck for kids and a second effectively plunge pool or smaller pool that will be included. Uh, so a recreational space outdoors, so the ability to play tennis, play tennis, cricket, um, football and the like in a confined space but also an active space that's multi-purpose as well. There we go, the splash deck itself overlooking the parents lounge, so you, the capturing the parents lounge it's a really key design element certainly for our residence clubs moving forward and, and that is a melting pot of people coming together, young families, but also the safe environment that you can actually have the kids playing outside, catch up and obviously observe what's happening in the building itself. First floor childcare centre, 
for approximately 100 kids at the moment. So that's very exciting and it's certainly something we haven't done before at Villawood and that is include a childcare centre within the actual building itself being the, the residence club. So we're just going to um, jump now from obviously the project itself and the, and the residence club into the town centre, give you a little bit of context as to what that is and then Tony will come back and, and also have a bit of a discussion as well. Been working on Redstone for circa two years now. We're very excited to be working with Villawood, who we think share the same values and passion and commitment that we do, not just for the estate, but for the larger Sunbury area as a whole. Town centres are typically comprised of a range of both retail and commercial activities, but fundamentally they're places where people want to meet and to socialise and to interact with one another. So one of the things that's important and special about the town centre is that it's designed to be quite a large scale town centre. The town centre itself will focus on retail but will offer also other uses such as entertainment, leisure and community services. So it might start with a supermarket and a number of shops and it might be accompanied by a community centre but over time a whole range of services and facilities and activity will be introduced. And if we're successful in making it the place where people want to be, people will just naturally gravitate to the town centre because it will become accepted as almost the second heart of Sunbury. And that's really what we're hoping will happen over an extended period of time. Just to put all that into perspective, um, I moved up here in 1985 and I went out one Sunday night to get some takeaway food. There was the option of a fish and chip shop in the back of a milk bar or um, I think there was a pizza place <laughs> and that was about it. So Sunbury's moved on dramatically and I, as a Sunbury resident or ex-resident, appreciate the difficulties you have at the moment. Perhaps in shopping in Sunbury it gets very hard to get around. Redstone, to put it in perspective, is a brand new town centre for Sunbury. Um, it'll be modern, uh, it'll be something completely different to what you've ever seen. Retail shopping is not what it used to be. It's not a heap of shops anymore. It's all the community facilities that go with it, from medical to entertainment. So, and to put it all in perspective, Sunbury has a, a retail floor area of about 80 odd thousand square metres. So that's the entire, if you calculate every shop in Sunbury, it's about 80,000 square metres. There's permission on this site to go up to about 40,000 square metres. So if you can imagine half of Sunbury up on that hill, that's where we'll end up. It will be staged, but the first stage, and I'm happy to announce it today, is that we now have signed commitments um, as our anchor or major tenants that is Kmart and Coles, all right? So happy to say that today, finally. They are signed up and will be our first anchor tenants up there. So some good news for somebody about Kmart, because um, I know a lot of people like to go to Kmart. Um, but look, it's pretty exciting. All that will be anchored off the growth. They, they won't go in there day one, but effectively they've said, I think once we sell about 800 homes, they're in there. So that, we don't think that will take very long. But it will be a very, very exciting new chapter from Sunbury, away from the village concept of what we have in O'Shaughnessy and Evans Street, and moving into something we, we hope and think will be very exciting. And it'll be a place. And combined with some of the other opportunities Redstone will offer, when some of you eventually get to the back of Redstone and look at the views back over Melbourne, the walking trails will be created down along Jatsons Creek, it's going to be a very special environment. And Again, people forget, but we are a dead set 12 minute drive from Melbourne's airport, 12 minutes. And, and trust me, any other part of town to get that distance covered, uh, if you go down to Werribee, Melbourne, Craigburn, anywhere around the city, uh, it, we are so close to Melbourne. We are so close to the airport as well. So, and with the future growth of the airport, I think many jobs, etc., are going to be created down there. So Sunbury is due for some major, major changes moving forward, which we're looking forward to. Thanks. Andrew? The last part we want to capture is obviously open space. So open space is critically important to any development and any master plan community. This is a, a render uh, that has been done, taken from the top of Redstone Hill itself. So there's some amazing city views um, and we will certainly be leveraging that through the sales process and journey as well. But to put that into perspective, we are spending a lot of time looking at the open space, the parks, the layout, how they engage with obviously the community 
but also relating that back to what successfully has worked in projects uh, across the portfolio at the moment. So this is a, again an artist impression of the first park that will be delivered very, very early in the project, approximately within stage three. I mean, I'll, I'll reflect back on the master plan as to that location of that park uh, shortly. Now uh, we've got a fantastic team working on um, certainly our open space. Uh, they're just going to give you a little bit of context here and then um, we're almost done. In the development industry, I view Villawood as being the number one. They're innovative, they are looking long term, even more than that, they love what they do. They are building communities and that really comes from their heart. My involvement at Redstone is working very closely with Barry Murphy and, and Barry's responsible for the overall landscape vision. This is quite a different concept for urban development in Melbourne to really get this neighbourhood character and this individual identity working for people. So we're really thrilled. This is going to be a really big milestone in development in Victoria. I think the benefits of the open space throughout Redstone are everyone has great access to fabulous path networks. So we've got mostly off-road paths connecting all the parks. So it's really easy to you know, get the kids on the bike on Sunday afternoon and go for a ride. So all those things are going to be at your doorstep with a short walk or a short bike ride. What we're really trying to do is work with the landscape architect, work with council, work with the developer to make sure that we present something and we finish up with something we all can be very proud of. We've worked with Villawood for a long time and they have a real commitment to making their parks really useful for people. And that's something that Villawood's always been strong about, about using the open spaces as a place for meeting and getting to know your neighbours. Again, exciting to announce, but we do have a, a commitment from 24 of the best builders in, certainly Victoria, to deliver 45 display homes within the project. So you'll see that in early stage, but certainly if you are actively out there looking at homes, we encourage you to certainly speak to the builders that are recognised on this screen um, to obviously collaborate with what we're going to be delivering in terms of the land, and the land sizes and certainly what is available. This is a pretty raw image, but it is effectively the master plan at a planning level that has been approved, but it's for the first 800 lots of the project. Sitting right here um, is, is possibly um, what many of you will have seen, and that is the, the sales office. So there's quite a lot of activity happening around that space at the moment. Obviously, there's a, a lovely mural on the wall as well of Queen recognising 1974 and the Sunbury um, Festival. And then we've got the display village sitting through here. But the purpose of this plan uh, in totality is really to give you a bit of a flavour for certainly the diversity and the lot mix that will be provided. Um, that's something we do extremely well. It's something we're very, very focused on, and that is to deliver a lot mix that's unique to delivering a master plan community, but having a shopping list of different land size. So you can meet the market within the market. So you've got the ability that if someone wants a smaller block of land or a townhouse, right through to a really large block of land, um, this project will cater for any buyer, which is something that's quite unique, um, as well as once we get up over the hill, there's some really, really big blocks of land that, again, have uh, incredible views. Okay, so next steps. We are very, very keen to coordinate a time that suits um, people to, to have a tour of Club Armstrong, which is down in Mount Dunedin in Geelong. So we will be in touch about that. We will be talking to you very frequently, um, largely speaking through EDMs and electronic communication to the database and certainly via email. And as well, looking at ramping that communication up so we're a lot more clear as to timeframes, what's happening, you can be prepared, what the next steps are and when those next steps are occurring. There's our master plan. So we've got um, the red in here represents the display village that we talked about. Tony captured the, the space in here, which is the town centre. We've got a, a school that's located up here in this location. Obviously the, the Redstone Hill, um, 16 hectares of, of parkland, and then 45 hectares of parkland that is um, delivered with uh, Jackson's Creek itself. In terms of commencing to sell, we will be selling in this location to start with and certainly focusing in this area. The reason being that largely speaking, a lot of the services required um, obviously fall with gravity. So um, we, we will be working on that 
very soon. But the Platinum Club, so registering through the website with obviously your details, the Platinum Club gives you the ability to get information before others in terms of new releases, communicating, so you're ahead of the curve. We encourage you to register. If you haven't registered on the database, do so, but please um, tick the box that says Platinum Club and we'll obviously communicate with you uh, more frequently as to, to what is happening uh, and the relevant next steps. <laughs> <laughs>